Okay, so I'm just gonna share my screen. Uh, just see Can everybody see this screen? I don't think so. Not yet. Okay, can everybody see this screen? It's the blue. Up. It's not there blue. yet. Yes. Oh, there. Yes. Okay. Okay, so it's quite slow to respond, but um, at least it does. Okay, um, yeah, so thank you everyone for joining this uh, webinar tonight, um, uh, this Thursday evening. Uh, everybody might be a little bit um, spaced out, so uh, to bring everybody um, back to Earth, I'd like to start with a picture of the International Space Station. Oh. <laughs> um, and here you can see the capsule of the International Space Station with some of the seven windows of the, the space station that astronauts use to safely browse space from the inside. And just below the windows, you can see um, the hatches that astronauts are able to open and close to protect the windows from, for example, uh, micrometeorite strikes. Now, astronaut uh, engineers had to develop a way to open and close the hatches from the inside. So what they did was drill holes through, uh, one hole through each of the windows. So yes, there are seven holes inside the capsule of the International Space Station. So the question is, how does the International Space Station stay airtight uh, while still allowing astronauts to browse space in relative safety? And the answer is, I have absolutely no idea how astronauts are able to browse space in relative safety. So let's rather talk about a different type of browsing and one related to computers. You will all be familiar with this type of situation where you've got too many windows and browsers open in your, um, on your computer. And what essentially then happens is your computer starts to jump between tasks in order to complete them, which makes it very, very inefficient. What the, the better way to, to do it is to work on one task at a time. And unfortunately, that's exactly how our brains work. We try to work on multiple tasks at once and then our brains jump from the one task to the other. And um, so our brains don't function optimally when we have too many things going on at once. So in this talk, uh, we're going to have a look at the way you use your brain like a PC, which you shouldn't. And then also, I will ask you some engaging questions, which I'd like to know your answers to. And then we're going to have a look at um, what you can do about the um, ways in which you use your, your brain as a computer and you shouldn't. And what you can do about that predicament without a com completely necessitating a complete architectural overall of the inside of your skull. Right, so the first thing is we'll, um, we tend to, we, we will never try to install the latest Facebook app on a Nokia 3310. I mean, I really struggled, as you can see, to place the Facebook logo on the Nokia 3310. So that just goes to show that it, it's something we shouldn't do. Um, and so, but we tend to do that with our brains every single day. The thing is that our brains are still in an ancient era from thousands of years ago. 
he, um, it's still stuck in an, envi in, an, in an environment which was much simpler. Uh, there were no high technological innovations and the pace of technolo technological change was um, much slower and it wasn't increasing at the pace that it is today. We also lived in smaller, glue, smaller groups and with only a couple of friends and family as opposed to hundreds of friends and family, as you can see on uh, social media like Facebook and Twitter. We also didn't have the luxury of sugar, salt and fat being um, very uh, abundant. So it was very, very scarce and um, fast food nowadays is uh, around every single corner, which our brains are not adapted to. And so the context has changed, but we still uh, make the wrong uh, assumptions because our brain still thinks it's in, uh, in the Stone Age. So I can prove this to you by giving you this example, uh, this math question actually. So a bat and a ball together costs $1.10. But the bat costs $1 more than the ball. The question is, how much does the ball cost? Now, I'll give you a couple of seconds to ponder your question, and I'll, I'd like you to notice the first question that comes to your mind. Right, so... If you answer 10 cents, you would be very, very popular, but also very, very wrong. If, on the other hand, you answered 5 cents, you would be very unpopular, but you would be right. And the reason that happens is because our brain uses a different type of system and it tends to jump to conclusions. And it, it is often the wrong in wrong conclusion. Sometimes we, we jump to conclusions. In the right context, it works quite well, but in, in the wrong context, we tend to jump to conclusions and we think we have the right answer and it, tends, it ends up to be the wrong answer. If, on the other hand, I ask you to calculate uh, what is 17 times 34, then it is not as an answer that you would come up, uh, would be able to readily produce an answer. So you would come up with, um, you would have to think about it before you come up with an answer. Now, I'm not going to allow you to calculate that answer. I've calculated numerous times for you just to double check. And the answer is 578, which I would still need to, verify with our resident economist, Karusha, afterwards. And so the way we treat our brains uh, has a lot to do with the context we find ourselves in. And um, because the, the context itself has changed. The second way we use our brains as computers is the following. We try to run... Uh, our brains too long without shutting them down in the same way we used to do that with our computers. I do that every single day. What happens over time with our computers is they tend to become really, really, really slow and um, very inefficient. So it's often good to just shut them down every now and again and then just restart them. The same thing happens with our brains. You see, what makes humans unique from any other mammals or any other animals for that matter, and especially plants, <laughs> is that we have a, uh, a very advanced prefrontal cortex. That is the frontmost part of the brain as indicated by the um, red area there on the image. Uh, that red area allows us to um, engage in self-control and inhibit our impulses and access have access to our self-control. And as Mpo pointed out last week, it allows us to delay gratification. 
unless the Krispy Kreme donuts that Louisa brings along are, looks very appetizing. So um, that 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 is the part of the brain that makes us very unique. But unfortunately, because a, a jumbo brain is unfortunately also a jumbo drain, and which means that the the fuel in the form of glucose that the brain uses becomes depleted very, very quickly in the prefrontal cortex, which makes up about 10% of the brain. So, and the more glucose is depleted, the less self-control and willpower we will be able to engage in. And the, the implication is that the more hungry we become throughout the day, the um, and the, the, the less we'll be able to focus and pay attention to what someone else is saying or communicating. And so how do we remedy this situation? One, one way is to have important meetings or very long meetings early in the morning when we are so fresh and when our glucose stores have been sufficiently replenished uh, in the morning or throughout the night. If we have long meetings later in the day, then problems can, can arise. Um, you know, as our self-control wanes and the, the glucose needed to sustain that energy is, is also depleted. It's been actually calculated that chess players when they are engaged in deliberate attention for a for many hours in a day, eight to twelve hours in a day, can consume up to six thousand calories in in a day. That is as much as a Navy SEAL use uh, in training, in in peak training. So it is quite uh, a lot. It is really a jumbo drain on the brain. Now, so that is the second way we should shut down our brains every now and again just to replenish our stores and our computers don't um, shut down by themselves. But nothing we do and nothing we pay attention to would be any use if we didn't have sufficient memory. So, When our computers store information, it stores it uh, verbatim, which means it, it is pretty much a one-to-one -one representation of, um, of reality. The intonations of my voice, the pitch, the words that I say, the video recording will, um, that Karusha's recording will actually be very close to 100% um, fidelity towards what it what it is actually representing, but unfortunately, um, we think our brains also work like that. We think our brains work like a webcam or a video camera, but unfortunately, our brains only store pieces of information and then conveniently for us fills in the blanks. So to illustrate this fact, or just to give you a test of your memory, let me uh, give you a couple of words, and then I will ask you a couple of questions. So do your best to remember these words as, as best you can. I'll put them up on the screen to help you along. The first word is bed. Rest. Awake, tired, wake, snooze, blanket, doze, slumber, snore, drowsy, yawn, and peace. 
Now, my, my question to you is, which of those words um, do you still remember? Uh, I'm going to give you three words. Did the word drowsy appear in one of those uh, in the list? Then the word sleep. Did the word sleep appear in the list? And then the word avocado. No. Okay, so who says the word drowsy appeared on the list? Me. Okay, uh, uh, Yuri, did you say yes or no? Okay. Uh, who said the word avocado appeared on the list? No. No. That sounds like a clear no. Uh, and the word sleep? Yes. Yes. Uh, Maputi, did, was that a yes? Yes, it appeared. Okay. So let's go through the words again. <laughs> and I'm going to start just rewinding. Peace, yawn, drowsy, <laughs> there it is, snore, slumber, doze, blanket, snooze, wake, tired, <laughs> awake, rest, bed. That's it. So the word sleep, unfortunately, did not appear. <laughs> um, as did the word avocado, thank goodness. So the reason you all thought the word sleep appeared in the list, mo or most of you, um, I didn't, <laughs> is because um, our brains don't remember words per se, but it remembers the category or the construct um, that we were dealing with. And um, it, um, it, it, it's fascinating um, that you can give people a, you can show them an image of a kitchen uh, and have certain appliances in that kitchen and then ask them to recall if a toaster appeared in that image. And most people will say, yes, a toaster appeared in that image when it actually didn't. And the reason is, is because we tend to remember the schema of and all the things associated with the kitchen and, and not the items itself. And so, so that happens. And uh, what I've tried to do with this um, is to give you ways to remedy these um, situations. And so the question then becomes, how do you remedy this situation? And unfortunately, there is no remedy. Um, you can just enjoy the limit of, limits of your brain's capacity and just remember that there are seven holes inside the International Space Station and, and it's been functioning for close to 25 years just perfectly. And then just one last thing that I would like to add is um, with this image, you know, our brains often, uh, or computers rather, it functions in so many ways. And, and you know, just for a computer to start up, as um, some of you might know, takes many, many different processes. And so many of them we are not even aware of. We just execute tasks and wait for the um, execution of the computer. And in the same way, our brains do exactly the same. And so I want to ask you, there are two words in this slide, the word kiki and the word booba. Which of those words would you put, would you associate with which one of those images? So just one word per image. So 
who would associate Booba with the image on the left? No, not me. Okay, and the word Kiki with the word on the left, with the image on the left? Yes. Okay, so why do you say so? I guess it's an association thing. Um, I don't know for sure, but... Uh, I, I would say because the K's in Kiki look like the shape and the B's in Booba look like the shape. Yes, that's, that's more or less correct. And um, we, I mean, we often, uh, there's heavy technical reasons for why that is so. And it, it, it's fascinating and I have absolutely no idea. But uh, it, it is fascinating how we often do things and our brain processes things in such a way that we are absolutely um, unfamiliar with and we think that um, we, we have insights into our brain's subconscious and, and the full workings, inner workings of the brain. So in, in conclusion, I just want to, want to say that, um, I mean, how did, if we are so, um, can I say the word, naive and we tend to jump to conclusions and we tend to run our brains when we should actually be shutting them down. How did we end up with a man in the, on the moon or the International Space Station in space? And the, the thing is that um, we don't, um, you know, we, we, we can survive extreme circumstances and we do a lot of complex calculations. But, um, you know, not knowing how we, we calculate, we, you know, doesn't prevent our brains from, um, from, from still calculating and being of value to us. We can, by, but by knowing our limitations can prevent our brains from shutting down. And that is what really counts. That brings me to the end of the webinar. And thank you so much for joining Thank you, Werner. That was fascinating. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Yuri. Appreciate it. Can I just ask you a question? Yes. You know, the when you when we're go, going through that exercise where we have to, had to remember words, I I'm experiencing uh, like a blackout in a way, like I forget. So I, I was just wondering. Um, how do you, is it because maybe I, I, my, my, I don't shut down my brain or what causes this, this forgetfulness that um, we, I, I mean, I'm, I'm experiencing it and it's so bad. So meaning I hardly, like, I can't remember, like, I just can't store information. Like some information just gets in and gets out. And I find that very disturbing because obviously as I grow older, I think it will be worse. Yeah, there's many different reasons. I can point you to a couple of books <laughs> um, on, on Amazon, but then you will get a lot of recommendations on books on memory from Amazon. <laughs> um, so you don't have to remember them. You can put them in a um, wish list. But um, uh, there, there's many different reasons. And one reason people don't forget uh, or, or actually forget as they get older and they don't actually suffer from memory problems is because as we get older, we tend to not pay attention in the first place to what we are remembering. So if you have to look at the words, you're not paying attention to the words as you should. So the um, if you can think of memory as um, input, process, and output, the information in the first place is not coming in. It's not, it's not being, um, it's, it's, it's not even entering your brain in the first place because you're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. another, another reason is because the memory is not being consolidated. So it's not being stored inside your, your, your brain for various reasons. Uh, you, might, you might have been preoccupied with something else. It's not 
familiar to you or it doesn't trigger some kind of association. If you've been reading, let's say, for example, you've been reading lots of books on, on donkeys and you had you saw the word donkey, you might have remembered that word um, because it's now, um, it, the, the word donkeys comes readily to, to your mind. Um, another another uh, another reason is that you might actually remember it, but you you might not know that you you remember it. That that's something they call um, a crypto amnesia, where and, and that's actually how some plagiarism arises. Is um, you know when when you've read something in an article and then you write something down and you think it's your own thoughts, but then it's actually from something you remember, but you don't know that it is something that you remember. So it's, it's odd. So that, that would be my theory. Uh, so, I want to just connect to that uh, or just uh, comment on that. Um, I recently read a book, which I found fascinating, um, but the author of the book, says that many times it's not about retention, in other words, remembering. Like you said, it's about attention, that we don't pay attention when we are taking information in, and then the brain thinks, ah, oh, this is not important, and just filters it out. Ah. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And I think that's, that's become such a big problem um, these days with the information overload exactly. that we've been experiencing with, um, I mean, I could, you know, any article, blog articles, I mean, you can't write a thousand word blog article these days because there's just so many content and um, YouTube videos, um, you know, the, the attention span is just so short that, um, that, you know, people just can't pay attention. There's actually a, a marketing executive that I'm friends with who's moved to Australia now she mentioned to me that um, she's actually working with the fourth employee of LinkedIn. Um, he was the fourth employee of, of, of LinkedIn, actually. And he, he mentioned, well, they've actually started, uh, like the big companies, Coke, for example, with one-second digital strategies. In other words, having a, a digital marketing strategy on YouTube or Facebook and trying to capture someone's attention within one second. Wow. One second. I mean, where, where is it going to end? I mean, if, if we're at one second in 2022, sure. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Um, well, this is, this is, I mean, the, the <laughs> author of the same book also talks about um, uh, we actually train our brains to get distracted by picking up our phones all the time mm. and looking at diff having different phones and different notifications. <laughs> we train our brains to get distracted. And because we are distracted all the time, we're not storing as much information as our brains have the capacity to do. And we have the capacity to recall it. Uh, but we're so distracted that we don't pay attention when we're taking information in. Yes, oh, can I have the name of the book here? I, I think <laughs> right now, like <laughs> it's called Limitless by, by Jim Quick. Quick Jim Quick, wow! Yeah. In okay. K W A W. Please, uh, please send it on WhatsApp or something. I'm gonna forget. Uh, you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll send it. Thank you, Verna. Uh, Yes, Mpo. Thank you so much for using the analogy uh, with the computer. You started off by showing us an image where you have many tabs open. And yes. it's like with us. So now I'm thinking if we have the many tabs, how do we close them? Because <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and I mean, that actually links to what Yuri has said. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, focusing in, on, on one thing at a time. Uh, mm -hmm. Cal Newport wrote a book called Deep Work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that that speaks to the heart of exactly what you're saying, is mm -hmm. when you are working on something, focus only focus on something. that one thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the, there's, a, you know, the problem is actually, um, is, is, a, um, is an addiction. Because 
you know, jumping from one video to the next or one blog post to the next or one tweet to the next is actually, um, you know, that, that keeps our dopamine circuits energized. Mm. And so you become really addicted to, to that dopamine. And the problem then becomes is you start to layer in lots of different sources of dopamine. You have the music on from YouTube and yeah. uh, maybe uh, iPhones, and you have a blog post that you're reading, and you have a, a YouTube video that you're watching. So, and you're jumping between tasks, and, and that keeps your dopamine circuits. But wow. it's actually counterproductive because the more you do that, the more you have to do it to achieve the same level of dopamine hit. And and that that is nothing other than an addiction. You know, it's it's you know it's exactly the same as a drug addiction. It's it's no different. And when you abstain from that, you know, jumping bet- between um, blog posts or um, any type of digital media, if you abstain from that for one or two days or so, you will get withdrawal symptoms. Yeah, that is exactly what you will experience, unfortunately. Um, but I mean, you will feel much better afterwards. But but it is an addiction. Interesting. So basically, multitasking is not really. Um, it delays productivity in a way, if you think um, about it. Correct. Yes, because we we're not um, we're not meant to multitask. Uh, we our brains don't work that way. Yes, we when we say we are multitasking, our brains are actually jumping between tasks. Um, that is that is actually what's what's happening. Even if you are, even if you're driving and listening to music, some people actually say that that's even more dangerous than um, you know, or just as dangerous as speaking on your phone because your brain is jumping between mm-hmm. looking at what's going on in the road and listening to um, an audio book. Sure, uh, interesting. So um, yeah, but it's um, fascinating. Okay, I'm closing my tabs now. <laughs> only only open one yes. <laughs> uh, do you know the joke that says my brain has many tabs open yeah and i don't know where the music is coming from <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah. happened to me a few times yeah no, for sure <laughs> i think um the I'm, I'm i'm due to read that book the, the mind power is it mind power which one the mind power is it? Yeah. The one that I mentioned. No, no there's another oh. one about you. Sorry. Who's the author? Q. Mind power. It, who's the author? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I, I wanted to talk about the power of the mind. Hmm. Or uh, sometimes, see, as 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 uh, you you mentioned that you know, as powerful as it is, it can also just not give you anything tangible. Mm. That's how powerful it is. If yes. you can't control it in a way. Mm. No, for sure. Definitely. Are there any no. other questions? Um, I'd like to know more about the space station with the holes in it. I'm going to go Google it right <laughs> now. <laughs> yes, I can refer you to a video. Um, okay. Just promise me you've got only one tab open and I'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually the, the they use O rings. It's like a rubber ring, um, yeah. they, but it's it's very technical that they that they um, that I mean, if you've got a leak, then you've got a leak uh, in that ring. It's just oh, basically yeah. two rubber rings. But I'll I'll send you a link to that. Please, video. fascinating. Please, I'd like to see it. That's amazing. It's so crazy. Yes, yes I'm I don't know who else does this. When I listen to audio books, I put them. Um, like the audio to be faster right. and I can still follow. Is yeah. it that or good? <laughs> well, <laughs> our brains can our, our brains can handle that that uh-uh. speed. Um, I actually tried it after I read this book by Jim Quick. Um, and he actually he's a speed read yes, trainer. He's, he's, uh, quick. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's quick. He's one of he's one of the quick readers, quickest readers in the world. His whole um, family is quick. Yeah, his whole family. He was born quick. <laughs> uh, anyways, enough of the dad jokes. 
Uh, anyways, what was I saying? <laughs> uh, um, about Jim Quick and the uh, Limitless. So, yeah, I can't uh, remember now. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, anyways, doesn't doesn't matter. Um, I, I recommend anybody go read that book. It is um, it is mind blowing. Will you share it in the group, please? I will do. <laughs> I will do. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, please do. All right, Vander, send me the link of that video. I'd like to watch it. Yes, I'll, I'll do. Oh, I wanted to say, when I work on my uh, personal laptop, I normally have, I don't have only one browser open with different tabs. I've got three different browsers open with multiple tabs on each browser. So <laughs> I'm the worst when it comes to that. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, and, and then you really don't know where them <laughs> <laughs> Even my computer goes, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and even if I shut down many different tabs, it's still slow. It still takes up so much resource. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Anyways, Vander, fascinating talk. Yeah, uh, I really, really thank you. It. It's a thank pleasure. You, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Carissa. Thanks for the recording. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And I'm do- I'm gonna be giving Verna his evaluation at our next Toastmasters meeting. Yay! Cool. Yeah. Uh, so, so we should uh, be looking forward for this kind of uh, engagement be, uh, going forward. Then, are you committing yourself? <laughs> no. Uh, to, the, to the webinars. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was just a uh, part of my um, one of my electives in my level. What uh, is your pathway, Vietnam? Pathway um, presentation mastery. Oh, so it's coming for you too, my I see. <laughs> I'm learning. Jason, <laughs> what is your pathway? Um, my pathway is uh, coll- team collaboration. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm innovative planning. Okay. okay. Interesting. I'm also presentation mastery. Oh, uh, you too, Nekarisha? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There's an option of the blog writing, like eight blogs in a week, and Yuri did it, and I, I just saw no, that. No, no, Johan did it. Wow. Johan did it. Uh, oh, you, no, it? Oh, you really? Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, that's what I meant. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah and, and that was just. I, yeah, I to write that. eight blogs in one week is insane. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, I, I said I read that and I closed my tab. Just <laughs> <laughs> it was only the next day that I had the courage to write it. No, that's. Uh, no. Writing, uh, writing one blog a week is. Is enough. Your Eight blogs in one week is insane. Sure. That's yeah, that, that really tests your attention. Oh yes. No. You can't sure. have multiple tabs open. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. All right, uh, ladies and gents, have a good evening. Thank you, you so much. Week, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.